Here's something you need to understand. People don't argue with themselves. Yes, they do. No, they don't. Dude, we're doing it right now. Yeah, but that's just editing magic. It's actually true. They don't. And that helps us with understanding influence theory. I want you to think of a lawyer who is talking to a witness on a witness stand. And what do lawyers do? They ask questions. But what they're really doing is leading that witness in the direction that they want the witness to go. Isn't it true that? Would you say that? It looks a little like this. Are you the kind of person who acts in such a way that the lives of others are put at serious risk? No. Is driving under the influence of class A drugs a risk to others? Not that kind of a person? They are trying to lead the witness into a logical conclusion. They answer questions a certain way, and they can't go back on what they said. Now look, for most lawyers, and in that situation, it's about really manipulation. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about leading someone to do what is already in their best interest. So I think the better picture here is more like a counseling session. How you doing? <laughs> That's how you start a psychotherapy session. How am I doing? <laughs> I was promised a riverboat journey into the jungles of my subconscious. Instead, I get the same question I hear from the lady who slices my bologna at Ralph's. <laughs> okay, so not that counseling session. But this is what great counselors do. They lead you on a journey of your own making. It's based upon you and where you should go. Now, in both cases, attorneys and counselors, we see the principle of commitment and consistency in action. See, our brains are always looking to make sense of what is a complex world. To do that, our brain is constantly looking for patterns. Our mind doesn't like the thought of dissonance. We want to see order in the world around us. So when I'm shopping for something, I look for confirmations along the way, things that mark my mental path. So for example, if I'm shopping for a home, I'm not just looking for that home. I'm looking for all the elements that make up that home. It's the community, it's the schools, it's the street scene, it's the floor plan, it's the features. But during that search, something interesting is happening. I'm building a mental case. I'm adding pieces to a logical puzzle. This is where you come in. You can help them on that journey. You can ask the questions that establish commitment and consistency. Here's what you need to understand. When people continually say yes, they continue to say yes. Now, why is that true? Because people don't argue with themselves. The principle of commitment and consistency is based on logic. A leads to B, which leads to C, which leads to D. Now, to be clear, I'm not suggesting manipulation. People can say no at any time along the way. Okay, so how do you apply this? Well, you need to get your customers into a pattern of small decisions, small agreements. The head needs to go north and south. But what's critical to understand here, it's not that they're agreeing with you, it's that they're agreeing with themselves. They're making small commitments to themselves and they are consistent to hold true to those commitments. This is where the principle of process-based closing comes into play. Closing is not a moment in time. It's a series of decisions all throughout the process. And the great salesperson has those consistent moments where we're checking in with a minor close. We're just saying, Does this, is this what you were looking for over here? Do you like this over here? What do you think of this? Can you see this being fitting into your life? When we have those moments all throughout the process, 
we're building a case that this is the right home, this is the right product for that customer. All right, so here's your homework. First of all, whatever you are selling, break down the buying process. Break down the buying process into a series of steps and then design questions around each of those micro decisions along the way. Finally, you can summarize the micro decisions at the end in the form of a summary close. This is so powerful if you learn how to do it properly. Your customer wants to be consistent. They want to make those commitments and they need your help to get there. Learn how to do that. Hey, thanks for watching today's five minute sales training. I've got a lot more to teach you about follow up. Mastering Sales Follow Up is my brand new online masterclass on the subject of sales follow up what to do when the customer says, not yet. This virtual masterclass is an indispensable resource to allow you to maximize your virtual follow up efforts. This is a deep dive, step-by-step -step guide to level up your follow-up skills and earn elite top 1% status. Enroll in Mastering Sales Follow-Up today. Check out the link in the description below. And until next time, learn more, turn more.